The government's promising to push through new laws to help force down the price of petrol by mid next year. A final report by the Commerce Commission into the retail fuel market has found industry profits are higher than they should be for a competitive market. The recommendations focus on changes at the wholesale level and include adopting an enforceable industry code of conduct, clamping down on restrictive contracts between the main fuel companies and the smaller players which resell the fuel, introducing a more transparent pricing regime and improving information for drivers. So what does that actually mean for you at the pump? Well, Consumer Affairs Minister Chris Farfoy joins us now. Good evening, Minister. So 11 Good recommendations evening. from this final report. How many of those 11 are you committed to making happen? Uh, most of them. We're still yet to take um, those detailed recommendations to Cabinet, but um, uh, we saw the report a little bit for, before it came out um, and we were able to work through uh, what in principle we will commit to. Uh, obviously the substantive changes around the wholesale market which will free up some of those smaller distributors I think to um, increase the level of competition uh, at the retail level um, uh, will help um, and we think uh, we've got clear evidence that when competition uh, does come to a market or come to a location that prices head south. So when you say most of them, how many are you thinking? How many of the 11? Uh, oh look, again, Lisa, um, uh, I think the substantive ones, uh, we're yet to kind of go th through the cabinet process in detail with all of them, um, but we will do that. Um, but the substantive so ones, as I say. The reason I ask, Minister, is the report itself says that the recommendations are interdependent and in order for them to work, they're a package. So it's kind of an issue of committing to them all or, or no guarantee that it's going to work. Well, that might be the case, but we haven't actually gone through the Cabinet process. Um, we have discussed uh, the substantive ones, which you've already outlined. Um, so we'll make sure we do that with colleagues and go through it in uh, much more detail now that the report uh, is released. Um, but as I say, we have committed to the substantive ones uh, that we think will make a big difference to what will happen uh, at the local level. Why wouldn't you commit to them all, having gone through this whole lengthy process? Uh, because I think Cabinet needs to take some time. It's the first market study we've uh, done. We'll get some more detail than what, um, and analysis of uh, the final report and those recommendations uh, from officials and give some time to Cabinet to go through all of them. As I say, um, we had a discussion uh, very briefly about the substantive um, recommendations that came out of the report and uh, as the Prime Minister said um, some months ago, um, we're committed to making sure that we put these in swiftly, which is why we'll have some ledge um, early next year and hopefully passed uh, by the middle of next year to make some, make some of these substantive changes, especially to the wholesale market. OK, so how much cheaper, because this is what everyone wants to know, yeah. how much cheaper <laughs> is it going to make petrol at the pump? Look, I think we can only go off the gauge of what's happened uh, when there has been competition introduced to some areas. Um, the examples that I've been used, uh, using today, which is clear evidence that um, they do head south, is the likes of Wellsford. Uh, when when Gull came to town, uh, the prices dropped there by 18 cents a litre. And then at the other end of the spectrum, uh, Waitomo opened up an upper hut here uh, in May. Um, they started off their offering 32 cents a litre um, uh, cheaper than uh, the others in the area, and mysteriously, um, they dropped their prices by 32 okay, cents a litre. And I think, and I think that's the kind of thing that we're trying to encourage with increased competition, which the wholesale market is a barrier to that at the moment. Okay, so that's when an extra player has entered the market. Because if you look at the fine print in this report, which I'm sure you have, it says there hasn't been a cost-benefit analysis. So um, they're saying that potentially you, the government, might want to m do a cost-benefit analysis as part of the decision-making process because the, the reality is, Minister, you don't know how much this will save people or if it will save people anything at the pump, do you? Well, it's going to be an, an art, not a science, and we, we can't set the prices. That's not what this is about. Again, it's another reason why we take the recommendations to Cabinet and have a good think about them rather than just saying yes two days after we get them. Um, but again, what we're trying to encourage is competition in the retail market. The Commerce Commission has given us a clear steer um, that the issue for them to ensure there is increased competition is unlocking some of the potential in the wholesale market so the likes of Gold, the likes of Waitomo, the likes of NPD can actually play a bigger role uh, at the retail end of the spectrum. OK, so when we look at some of those recommendations, one of them, this terminal gate pricing, and if we put it in plain English, basically you're trying to create a spot market like we have for electricity. Um, are you going to make that mandatory? 
terminal gate well, pricing? Well, that's certainly um, the substan part of the substantive change or recommendation that the Commerce Commission has made. We've agreed in principle to commit to that because that's part of the package, as you say, that unlocks the wholesale market to some of these smaller players. There are other issues um, around some of the contracts that some of these uh, smaller players are locked into at the moment with some of the bigger players, which do, again, um, restrict their ability to play a bigger part uh, at the retail end. And again, we're committing to... Uh, to, to dealing with those. Locked again, into those contracts for how long, Minister? For some time, some, uh, what I've been told, and again this is, comes out of the Commission, uh, Commerce Commission's report, sometimes it's going to be 10 or 15 years that they're locked into uh, some of those arrangements. It, it, it also has exclusivity, so if you buy petrol off one, you can't buy uh, petrol off another. And that obviously uh, dictates which price you pay for quite a long time. Uh, and again, that's been a barrier for what they can do uh, at the retail end. So that's okay. why the Commerce Commission has come back to us and said, actually, if you deal to this, we can see some more competition at the retail end. So if you change the law next year, as you intend to do, companies that are locked into 10 to 15 year contracts, they'll just, what, will they have to run those contracts down or will whatever you do null and void those contracts? Well, MB will work uh, very closely with those stakeholders in the market to understand exactly where some of those contracts are. So um, some work is still to be done to ascertain exactly uh, who's got which contracts and how long they've got to go, but they're seen as an impediment uh, to increasing competition at the moment. And as I say, we've got some time to make sure we work mm. through that, but we're committed to making sure that that, can be our, that, that, that particular part of the recommendations uh, is followed through. So potentially we might not see change, even if you change the law for a decade, if people are locked into these contracts, that could be the reality, couldn't it, Minister? Uh, or um, new contracts can be made uh, when the law changes midway through next year, which might unlock some of this. There's also some, again, assessment of where things are at the moment and what contracts may or may not be, be able to amend it or entered into from when the law changes to unlock some of that potential uh, in the wholesale market. And, and again, to deal with issues that, uh, when consumers are at the petrol pump. So realistically, when is petrol at the pump going to go down in price? Look, uh, we're hoping to change that legislation by mid next year. Um, we're going to have to work very closely with the industry uh, about what that means. And the flow on um, from that will reach the pump when, do you think? Well, look, I, I would hope that um, if we can change the terminal gate pricing uh, and deal to uh, the, uh, the contracting issues which we've just been talking about, it, that it happens soon after. Uh, the terminal gate pricing and the ability to get in there and uh, buy at a competitive price again is something that uh, those uh, distributors, those small distributors haven't been able to do. If we change that law and we can bring it in quickly, then hopefully we'd see some changes soon after. Before you go, Minister, will TVNZ merge with Radio New Zealand to make one super state broadcaster? You'll have to wait. That's another one where you'll have to wait for Cabinet to make a decision. And will that be at the final Cabinet meeting of the year, Minister? Will we have a decision after that? Well, we're pretty, we said pretty clearly we hope to do that before Christmas, and that's still the intent. Can you give us some clues? No. <laughs> You're going to have to wait. All right. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> that is Chris Farfoy joining us from our studio at Parliament.